Let's pray. Uh, Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, thank you this day. Most of all, thank you for Jesus. Uh, Lord, we do lift up uh, the people uh, in Tennessee uh, that have passed away um, or injured. I ask you to uh, comfort to their families, uh, heal the injured, and uh, Lord, please be with them. And Lord, may we uh, thank you for uh, getting together uh, together tonight. And may we open our word to your heart. May you open. May we open our hearts to your word. May you open your word to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. All right, First Peter four. I shall read it. Uh, Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. For we have spent enough of our past time in doing the will of the Gentiles, when we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these, they say it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to the men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. There's that verse. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold of grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as a part of the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and dominion forever and ever. Beloved, do not think it is strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice to the extent you partake of Christ's suffering, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, the spirit of glory of God rest upon you. And on their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, thief, or an evildoer, or as a busybody. Must be talking to the women. In other people's matters, yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in his matter. For the time has come. For judgment to begin at the house of God, and if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to Him, and doing good as to a faithful Creator. Done with sin. <clears throat> Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind, for he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. Uh, so, suffering. Um, is Christ-like. Suffering for God, suffering for the gospel. And, uh, you know, I remember the first time I saw the passion of Christ. I think I was a non-believer. You know, and then I remember uh, 
I win and I put that cross up on the church. And either that day, that next day, or that day I went home and I watched the passion of the Christ dubbed in to uh, lead me to the cross. And smack, man, that just, whoa, that's when it hit me. And I didn't really realize, you know, hey, I thought, you know, obviously God was speaking to me, hey, you know, I want a cross put up there. It's, the building is designed for I mean, you know, right, come on. And uh, I put it up there, but I didn't really realize at the time, you know, what the spiritual significance of that was. You know, I was just doing it. And uh, when I saw the passion of the Christ, and it just whacked me in. And it was a sin I was suffering with and gone instantly, never to return. And that's how impactful. And the Holy Spirit was like, Phew. That's how much that impacted me, watching how much Christ suffered, you know, for our sins. You know, on the cross, six hours. And imagine how much Jesus hates sin. You know, he, he took that for us. He hates sin so much and so bad. He did that for us. You know, so that we would no longer have to suffer uh, with that in it. As long as we partake in, in Christ. We get to have eternal life with Him. Um, but He paid an awful price to set us free from it. And now He no longer is like, I don't have anything to do with sin anymore. You know, I, it's been defeated. Um, the insight that Jesus died a horrible death because of our sin ought to be a sword in our hand to defend us from sin returning to harass and defeat us. Uh, just as Jesus died for our sins once and for all, so we are to be done with sin ourselves. It's not that we're not going in. Everybody says, oh, I'm a sinner saved by grace. Yeah, but I mean, you know, we're, once you're saved and your Holy Spirit's living in you, you should not have that, you should have the desire not to sin anymore. It's not that we're not going to, because we are. Uh, there's all kinds of sins. I mean, you break it in the speed limit. Broke man's law. I mean, but and we're probably all guilty of that, um, you know. But you know, we're really as, as we mature in our faith with Jesus, you know, we're supposed to cast those off. Um, you know, probably might have been it was November. As an example of the Holy Spirit, never had this happen before. Hopefully, it'll happen again. But there was this guy who was on his job, and he had had, um, I'd say he didn't go, oh, I'm not saying he wasn't a believer, but probably not. So he had had a heart issue, landscaper on the job, and hadn't been able to get, hadn't been able to do the work, and then the homeowner was, you know, was related to him, was pushing him, and the guy just had, you know, calf, and, and I was like, how are you doing? He's like, I'm not feeling too well. I'm like, uh, I pray for this dude, you know. And you know, I was looking at him, and finally I said, I'm, I'm going to go do it. So I go over there, and I pray for him. I said, like, wow, I really appreciate it. And uh, Alan, my employee, was sitting in one of our trucks. And I'm like, is that, that old one? Where's that spell coming from, that perfume? What is that? I wonder if he's got it on. And I got my truck, and his son had <laughs> drove my truck. And I'm like, he spilled something? I spill some oil in my truck or, you know, put one of them Christmas trees in here. This is strong. I'm going down the highway and I'm like, still I ain't, I ain't got a, I ain't clued in yet. And I'm like, man, is there some type of factory around here? Well, I get to the landfill and I said a curse word and got it. <laughs> going around and it finally dawned on me. I'm like, you know what? I was a, I was a Holy Spirit. Right there. And, yeah, I mean, obviously he didn't leave me, but he, he checked it out, man. You know, he's like, oh, I can't have no part of that. No foul language. And, you know, foul language is, that's the language of the devil. And, uh, but, you know, uh, just that, as that example right there, I mean, you know, the Holy Spirit was like, you know, I'm rolling, man. And I you know, hope I'll have that experience again, but it took me, and it take me, but maybe three or four minutes to figure out, maybe five Wow, that was cool, but I screwed it up. So, you know, of course, I repented, but I 
it's just that happened, an example that happened lately. So I'd share what, uh, what that helped you. Um, Instead of living in order to fulfill our petty desires and lusts, um, we live with a higher purpose, uh, to live the rest of our earthly lives for the will of God. Um, that is God's desire for us, His plan for us to learn to pattern our lives and our lifestyles after His will. Uh, it is not born in a world fashion for the challenge and adventure and the only way our lives can really be fulfilled. And if you've ever uh, been walking in what God, you know, I pray that y'all have experienced like walking in exactly what God has wanted you to do in that moment. And there's nothing like it. I mean, it's a thrill a minute, crazy stuff happening. Uh, you know, you're just full of peace. Uh, and, you know, I don't know. Be need to be able to stay there your whole life, and I think we might waver truthfully in and out of that. Or you're in it, and then you do something, or you get worldly, and you get back out of it, and then you're striving to get back to that point uh, to where you know, because you know what it's like. Um, but uh, yeah, if you know what you're, you know, I guess God's got a plan for each and every one of our lives. And he still uses, even if obviously if we weren't following Jesus from, you know, from the day we were raised and walking in God's will at 12 and kept hearing him and, you know, but even if we weren't, you've never been to church and you show up at church at 25 years old, per se, and, and God starts using you. Uh, and that might not have been what his plan, but he's still got a plan for you. He'll still use you right where you're at. And, uh, and then he might get you turned into the original will that he had for your life anyway. You know, I mean, who knows? But, uh, yeah, <clears throat> live for the will of God is what we all should strive to be as, as believers. Uh, verse 3, for we have spent enough of our past time. Now, here's Peter. You know, the old sailor. I was talking about custom. I'm sure he had a sailor's mouth. I used to have one too. Uh, for we have spent enough past lifetime in the will of the Gentiles, sinners, uh, when we walk in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. Now, I know none of y'all only, none of y'all in this room have ever done anything like that. Now, I can honestly say that some of you in here haven't done some of these things. So I was about to say, I think I've done every one of them. Then I started looking up this, and I was like, oh, no. Because <laughs> one of them was orgies, and I'm like, no, nah, nah, you got me there. But uh, <laughs> another one is a debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, idolatry. Um, it's, it's somehow, it's some of these vices that have been explained. Um, you know, debauchery, uh, lack of constraint, uh, which involves uh, one in conduct that violates all bounds of what is socially acceptable, self-abandonment, uh, sexual excess, um, lust, you know, God's still sexual desire in humans, but we are to restrict that desire to the one that we marry. Uh, drunkenness. Um, when we seek to intoxicate or drug ourselves in order to escape our lives or so we don't have to face our problems. Uh, you know, and a lot of that today, you know, that pharmacia uh, that's talked about, you know, that's how people deal with, you know, kids that has phones and everything's instant. We've talked about this before. Uh, that's how, if you do not know or do not have, and that's really where we need to focus, I think, is, is, is the church. And uh, um, if people, don't, number one, don't know Christ, uh, and then people don't know about the love and the peace of Christ, or how to get that, well, what are you going to do? You know, if you're struggling with anxiety, you go to the doctor, he's going to hook you up with some Xanax, Zoloft, or whatever. Now you're on the road, you don't want to go down. You know, that is of the devil. You know, if we don't know the suicide rate, but it's quite high on those mm -hmm. on those drugs. Alcohol is a cheap way. 
you know, before those drugs existed, you know, alcohol is another way to drown that out. Or, uh, you know, now kids today, heroin, my gosh, man, you know, they've taken it to the next level because there's so, there's so much anxiety in these kids, they really will check out. You know, and heroin really will check you out. You know, and it'll also kill you. Um, you know, Lace with fentanyl. But, uh, you know, that's, that is uh, unfortunate, but that is how some people deal with that situation. Um, and try to fill that hole that's in them that only God can fill. Nobody, nobody can fill it other than Jesus. And you can search for it your whole life, but, and people try, but that is how to fill that hole. This is what Jesus said. He'll fill it if you let him. So people who's Lives change radically at conversion may experience contempt from old friends. This is uh, verse 4. So, in regard to these, they think it is strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation and drunkenness, uh, sexual uh, sins, speaking evil of you. I remember uh, I was in college and there was a guy named uh, Tim Bizzle called the Biz. And uh, he was really good friends with one of my best friends. It was like his best friend. And uh, he got saved, you know, like 20, 19, I think I was 19 at the time. He got saved, he's gone. He's gone. I mean, every weekend, hanging out, when he got saved, he rolled. And because he knew that that's, you know, he, and I remember my buddy getting upset and being mad and not understanding, you know, that, that he just had to, had to get out of there. Um, and as, uh, mature believers, you know, we when people come in, we just need to help them not fall into that. You know, you, know, you got to get away from people say you got to get away from the old crowd. And I know when I was here, you know, again, I said, you know, I wasn't an alcoholic, I said I was an habitual drinker, I didn't have to have it, but I still drink every day. And uh, when I was here serving, you know, I didn't have time, <laughs> just to play it out. You know? Left and went to bed, is done. Uh, but anyway, after this was over, uh, you know, I had a friend. We'd get together on Friday nights and just hang out and drink beer. And uh, that continued on a little bit more. And then I was like, I'm going to quit. And I went a week, and then he came up, and then he had beer, and then boom, you know, and then I was wrestling that for a while. And ironically, you know, it was several things that happened. It was a bridge house guy, and I've told this story before. Uh, but we were at the altar, and he had, you know, his knees were hurting, and I was praying for his knees to be healed. And somehow, the conversation, I, I asked him, I said, you know, if you saw me walking out of the store with a six-pack, do you think it'd be all right? He's like, yep. All right. And, uh, you know, I'm going to leave the name out of the story. But the last beer that I had, uh, uh, somebody had come up, he's 20, had come up. And I thought I'd gotten all the beers out of my, from everywhere. And, uh, you know, you, they're laying around. So I thought I got them out of my four wheel or whatever. And I had one in the glove box. But this 20 year old was up there with me. In the dark, we're riding around here. <laughs> I'm like, you gotta be kidding me, man. Now he's over there drinking that gum. About 10 more hours. <laughs> That's another one. So a couple weeks went by and he came back up. I'm like, man, it's 20 drinks. So I was like, yeah, I'll buy six back. Man, I took the first sip of that beer, hand him one, and the Holy Spirit was like, Phew. I'm like, no, nah, we ain't doing this no more. And I'm like, why? Why'd you do that, man? You're, well, you know, I got enough going on. I don't need to be fighting God. And that was it. Last, last beer I ever had. Yeah, nine years ago. But yeah. Oh, that, that's the straight up of the last year I had. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so praise God. But yeah, uh, you know, that, the point being that, uh, um, yeah, for most people, you know, that are in that, and they're baby Christians, if they 
fault if they're around those other people. It's extremely difficult in the, in the beginning not to go back to that. You know, as long as they're out of that situation and they got some time behind them, then, uh, and, you know, and you got the 12-step program. And, you know, I, you know, I mean, once God gets a hold of you, uh, you really don't. My opinion, God can radically change and stop you today. I don't care what it is you're doing, what you've done. How addictive it is. I mean, if you're, you know, if you're on crack and you get saved, you never do it again. You know, you never have that desire again. God can literally take any of that and every all that away from you. That's a, you know, twelve steps to the altar. I just come up with that. That's the Lord. I didn't come up with it. I'm gonna say that's God. I never heard it, but thank you, Jesus. All right. Yeah, the twelve steps program is how far you got to walk to the altar. Uh, they will give an account. Verse 5. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. And to Jesus. For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. So, Every man will be judged. Now, believers will be judged uh, before the millennial reign at the Bema Seat. We'll be given our awards. And then at the end of the thousand years, uh, we'll be the great white throne. And then those that are dead and living, those that have lived through the millennial reign, um, they will have children. Uh, Satan will be released for, doesn't tell us the time period, but for a certain amount of time. Uh, they will follow Satan. They will come against God. And of course, they lose. Um, and then those individuals as well will be judged as well as everyone that has lived. But that's not where we're going to be, right? We're going to be the Venusy. Sorry for God's glory. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. Uh, we should live expectantly because Christ is coming soon. And that's what it says in my little footnote, but hey, I got news for you. You can't see that. You know, granted, you know, people say, ah, it's been 2,000 years, and, but certain things have had to transpire. As, you know, every day we're closer. You know, certain things have had to have happened. Israel becoming a state, um, you know, was the biggest prophetic sign. And then now it's just a matter of a few more prophecies being fulfilled and we're there. You know, we've talked about that peace agreement. I'm not really kept up with it. I know Benjamin Netanyahu just won. So him and Trump are buddies. And if they want to, you know, the other, the blue and white, or the, the blue and white party, think he's the coup. The blue and white party are kind of liberals. If they would have been in power, and this is their third election too. Might have been the fourth, I don't know. The, the third one was historic. Maybe the second one was historic. And this is the third. But I believe he's won. So now that may mean that that's a better chance for that peace agreement to go through. And has anybody heard about, now, I just, my wife said something to me about the Temple Mount and the you heard that? You know, for sure, for sure. What, what was that about? Yes, to, uh, they raised money. They were funding it. Plus, it was funding it to a coin that's out of the temple. So you, yeah, but somebody, yeah. she, she told me there was uh, offering animal sacrifices in the temple mount. Yes. Like, that's right. That's right. Like, now. Yeah. They did. They built, they built the temple mount and they're working on the foundation. On the temple mount. Yeah, where have I been? Well, that's, uh, that's in the Israeli times. Really? Yeah, I need to get back on that. Wow. Hey, you got news for you on Antichrist can't stand in the temple if there's no temple to stand in. But if there's a temple to stand in, you can stand in. Yeah. That's how, <laughs> that's how the pleasant part. I'm going to go home when I leave here and get all over the top of that. Apologize. Apologize I don't have that information for you. Israeli times. 
coach, both had a run in the last month. Wow. That's all I got to say. Wow. And, you know, in that, you know, there's going to be a worldwide government. And I do know a lot about this. You know, I'm not saying that this is the event, but with the virus, if it's a global pandemic, the world economy goes down, we need a global governance, you know, to, uh, and monetary system because all of these, we're, we've, we've all uh, over um, spent, each and every country's over spent. We've got money that, you know, we owe 20 trillion dollars we don't have. Um, so all these economies, so this might be this might be the, that beginning. We'll have to see. And if they get that peace deal, and you know, that's how close we could be. So, you know, like this verse says right here, we should live expectantly because Christ is coming soon. Get ready to meet Christ involves continually growing in love. You know, it's about love, loving each other, loving other people. Um, It's important to pray regularly and to reach out to needy people. Your possessions, status, power mean absolutely nothing in God's kingdom, but you will spend eternity with other people. Invest your time and talents. We heard about Pastor D.A. talking about time. Invest your time and talents where they will make an eternal difference. So, you know, knowing what we know, most people don't. I mean, let's be honest, most people do not know what we just said. Probably 99.9% .9 of the public has no idea. So, you know, now is the time where we really need to be making that final push and saying, hey, you know, people that we know that are not believers, now this is going to start, this is what it's all about. Now it's going to start getting their attention. Like, hey, you, you know, let me tell you about what's happened on the temple. You take it for what it's worth, but this is the book of Revelation. This is what it says. I'm just, you know, I need to get right with the Lord. Um, that's exciting. I heard it, but I did not know. I did not know they had started. Wow. That's exciting. And above all, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. We've heard that. Love will cover a multitude of sins. There it is. 1 Peter 4 8. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. <laughs> I wish the Rouse was here because I'd be like, man, were you grumbling when you let uh, Harvey yeah, live with you for a couple of years? Were you grumbling when Jim was there? I, I, man, I've been grumbling up. Not Jim. What was his name? John. That guy we had talked about, the, the guy that we met up here. Um, he was in a wheelchair. Somebody picked him up at Walmart. One of the people here that picked the dude up at Walmart brought him here. I just happened to be going around the traffic circle. God said, go back to the church. I pulled up. He was there. And then I think Pastor Jim, anyway, he got the Bible. He got the gospel and the altar. And he had, he had a gambling problem. He was a gambling addict. And got several of us. We need myself. So I don't know if I heard from the Holy Spirit or not. But I thought I did. You know, who knows. But anyway, so Jim let this guy come live with him. And he, and he he was he was difficult. I am not gonna lie. John was difficult. And then John finally went to a nursing home. Uh, he was in the hospital. I mean, he was always trying to scam. You know. But uh, anyway, he went to the hospital. Uh, we went with the nursing home over there and saw him. Uh, and then he passed away a couple of days uh, later. Uh, but he had uh, a he was a smoker. He had. You know, go look at oxygen tank and think it could burn. But, um, but anyway, I, you know, I believe he was saved. But, you know, he said he was. But uh, yeah, so hey, Jim, open his house up. He says, do it without grumbling. Wow, praise God. That's all I got to say. Uh, I was sitting there thinking of the example of uh, life groups, life group leaders. Man, I was just thinking. And man, these people come in here, eat my food, don't leave no money. Kyle's back here laughing. Yeah, that would be difficult every week. <laughs> man, use my toy by me, you know. Yeah, I was sitting there thinking about life group leaders, you know. 
Have you ever grumbled? Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. Uh, as each one has received a gift, uh, minister to one another as good stewards of manifold of the manifold grace of God. So we've all got gifts. Each and every one of us in this whole room have been given gifts by God. Some of us know what they are. Some of us have gifts yet uh, that God has yet to reveal to us or we've asked for. Um, but we're supposed to use those gifts uh, to edify the body and to to help each other out. Use encouragement if you're sick, healing, if you're uh, you know, up here uh, administering the word of God, which is administering sick people. Um, but uh, and then you have also got those other gifts. Uh, you know, God uses too, you know, um, till I was laughing because I printed this out. Yeah. I didn't take this because of this, but I was it says um, each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully ministering God's grace uh, in its various forms. Um, here you go, Steve. Let's examine this passage gift from the Greek noun charisma. Uh, that which is freely uh, and graciously given uh, favor bestowed gift. Notice that Peter doesn't include any distinction between spiritual gifts and natural talents or abilities. Uh, if we find a, and I'm not gifted, but we find a musician, uh, we don't question the source of the gift. Obviously the musical gift is from God, whether it's spiritual or not depends on how it's used. If it is used to earn a living, it is no less from God than if we were, than if it were used on the worship team in a church to build up the body. Uh, but if it becomes a spiritual gift, when it is yielded to the Holy Spirit to be used for God's glory and to serve others in the body of Christ, I just thought that was kind of cool. Like, you know, like I said, I mean, to, my wife looked at me the other night. She said, "Do you ever think you have a band playing behind you?" No. I mean, I still just kind of, uh, you know, it's like, I think somewhere here is like, you know, see the need, do the deed. You know, I was just, you know, going to the hospital, just the nursing homes and hospice, just, uh, you know, praying for people. You know, that's all I was doing. That's what I felt. That's what I was called and to do. And then once the worship team or the hospital ministry team, worship team, if you will, just kind of got broke apart. You know, I said, you know what? It's really cool. Let's see how this impacts people. Uh, and then I just decided to try to learn how to play the guitar. And here, I, you know, seven, eight, seven years later, that's all God. I ain't got nothing to do with me. You know, he started at 43, and now I'm 51. And I still just kind of like, what? That, you know, they got a God that is it's just a prime example of how God you know, can use somebody and like the will of God. Maybe that's what I was supposed to do. I'm not saying that, but maybe he's bringing me in. Maybe not. Maybe I'm walking somewhere I should be. But uh, he's still using it for his glory. So. But I just was reading. I'm like, no way. If anyone speaks, uh, let him speak as oracles of God, as, as ministers of God. If anyone ministers, uh, let him do it as uh, with the ability which God supplies. So just be, you know, just let God lead you. Uh, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, uh, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Suffering for God's glory. Beloved, and we can all, most of us can relate to this. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing has happened to you. When you were wondering, like, oh my gosh, uh, you know, why did my heart skip a beat? And all of a sudden, um, man, 
I feel like a panic attack. You know, where did that come from? You know, maybe she was fired at trial. Hey, as with anything else, you know, is, you know, why is my, why did I, and why is this financially happening to me? You know, well, God knows what it's going to get you to, you know. He'll use, God obviously can use that attack to get you to do whatever He needs you to do. And by, in that suffering, we become more Christ like. Because as believers, we know when we got that coming at us, there's only one thing that's going to solve it. And like I said, heroin and alcohol and drugs is not going to do it. You know, it's Jesus. And so you got to give it to Jesus, and I understand that. And when it happens, I just kind of chuckle. And, yeah, man, I hate that I had to get put in that position to get me to do what God needs to do. I mean, you know, well, I know better than that. But so be it. You know, and then you get on your knees and repent. And God turns you. Hopefully you start going in that direction that He wants you to go in. If not, do something else. But we're allowed something. Fiery trial, but rejoice to the extent that you partake in Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed to you, you may be also glad with exceeding joy. Um, Disciples, you know, they were happy. They were getting some of them. When they were getting beaten, they're like, sweet. We know they, they knew what kind of reward they were going to get. You know, and today, you know, imagine speaking of suffering, you know, we you know we really had to suffer here in the United States yet. Now it's probably coming in. It, it may not. We may not, but this, you know, Israel's the apple of God's eye. God created the United States. It's got His name on it, and He's used it to bless the world. That's why we're the greatest nation on earth, because of our humble beginnings. We've, you know, obviously strayed away from that, and we will suffer the consequences of that. But um, I don't know what that looks like for us as we go toward the end times. You know, I've heard it say uh, there's a passage on the um, she's taken out on the wings of an eagle. Referred to as the wings of the evening, with Ed Will, we are in the United States. So, um, our symbol is an American eagle. So, maybe we are not a part of that new world order. I don't, you know, it's been speculated, you know, uh, maybe we are, but, you know, maybe there's, because we are different than any country of the world other than Israel. Um, but, uh, but you look at Christians and especially women in Syria. Iraq and Yemen and yeah, yeah. They they've suffered for Christ. And that is a big time. You know. And hopefully we don't have to go through that, but if we do, we get rewarded for it. So we should rejoice exceedingly. If you were approached for the name of Christ, blessed are you. For the spirit of glory of God rest upon you. I don't know how many people in here have been uh, reproached for sharing the gospel or wanting to pray for somebody. Approached meaning, you know, they got in your face. Nobody spit on you, but, you know, you're a believer, go to a Bernie Sandler's rally and you know, hold a bottle of Jesus sign and find out real quick. <laughs> that won't take long. But, uh, yeah, I know. I was at Home Depot in Winston, and there was this guy over there, and I saw him. What is up with him, man? Just had just snot running all down his face. That bag. I come back out, and God made that little connection right there. And uh, he's huffing blue. So, he, man, I ain't never, I ain't never seen nothing like that. And uh, I walked up to him and I said, hey man, you doing all right? 
And uh, he said, why? And I said, well, you know, I said, I, I know someone that can heal you. He's like, who are you talking about? Jesus? And he went to blaspheming Jesus. I mean, straight up. And just walked away, you know. And uh, you know, he followed, he, he said he followed Jesus at one time and he didn't do nothing. He just, you know, walked away. But I'd never seen anything. And I was fixed to lay hands on the dude about the issue. But yeah, I got back in the car and started praying. Boy, it was just that evilness about it. But uh, I prayed for a friend of mine once before. And uh, in his office, and I heard him kind of laughing at my eyes closed. Well, I'll come back again, and I'll pray for him the next time I was in there. And he said, hey, he said, my relationship is between me and the Lord. It's none of your business. And uh, you want to pray for somebody? Pray for yourself. And I'll, I'll never forget. That was probably the worst just in your face I've had for somebody that I know. You know? Um, but uh, so I've had it. Um, and I'm sure it will, as we, you know, we should be pushing the bar. Uh, but, uh, and that'll happen as times as we, as you put yourself out there. Now, like I said, in the beginning, other than that one or two times, everybody that I went to when I was in that season was believers. Every one of them, I don't know how God worked that out, but every one of them, can I pray for you yet? I mean, everybody. Don't even know how I got worked up. He's got. I don't know why. I just made it like, well, if he gets rejected once, that's it. You know, I just not what I wanted to do. And then probably would have been, I can't say it would have been true, but maybe I'd be like, oh no, because I was fighting it anyway. You know, I'd call up Chin Chin Man, pray for me, man. Somebody's out right here in the wheelchair. Go do it. Go do it. And, you know, I'd go and I'd do it. I'd be blessed. Or I could sit there and fight with God if I wanted to, but it was never good. As soon as I did it, it was like, oh, praise the Lord, it all worked out. But maybe he just knew that somebody rejected me once or twice. I don't need to be done. And I, I still find that amazing that it was, you know, all believers in that season. But, uh, but then, on their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, as a thief, as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. So, that's pretty simple to understand. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let God be glorified in this matter. So as we're suffering, we can complain to other people as easy to do. We've all done it. Or we can say, you know what? How you doing? Well, I got this problem. Praise God. You know, I'm, God's going to get me through it. Or, ah, I'm, I'm, I'm suffering. You know, I'm just, you know, if, especially with not, you know, us, we, you know, we're talking about a non-believer, even to a believer. You know, we still need to uh, have an attitude like that. <clears throat> Um, you know, and just physically anyway, mentally, you know, if you got a positive steel thing, you got a positive attitude, that goes a long way if you're sick or you're hurt. Uh, if you got a negative attitude, you know, that's not, that's just going to continue to drag you down. And, you know, we need to be focused on Jesus. If we're focused on Jesus, that's a positive attitude. For the first, for the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. Uh, this refers to not the final judgment, but to God's refining discipline. God often allows believers to sin and then experience the consequences for several reasons. To show us of our potential for sin, to encourage us to turn from our sin, and more constantly to depend on Him. And if it begins with us first, begins with us first, what will the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now if the righteous one is sacredly saved, where well will the ungodly and sinner appear? Uh, 
Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to Him in doing good as to a faithful Creator. And we know that you know Peter. Peter, you know, was crucified upside down. I mean, he at the end of a lot of this. You know, John was boiled, and Stephen was stoned. Believers just throughout history, um, and they'll be rewarded for that. They'll be rewarded for uh, our sufferings. And that's what Peter's saying. Hey, they'll be rewarded. You know, have joy. Have peace. You know, lean in on God. And then we'll have. 